twelve sixteen, and I looked and beheld a man among the Gentiles who was separated from the seed of my brethren by the many waters. And I beheld the Spirit of God that it came down and wrought upon the man, and he went forth upon the many waters, even unto the seed of my brethren who were in the promised land. We know that this scripture is referencing Christopher Columbus. Was the Book of Mormon accurate in predicting that this was a man of God, or are these the words of a fool? So the current world view, we see Columbus depicted as a genocidal, greedy extremist that was involved in slave trading. Over 33 statues of Christopher Columbus have been removed from the United States. Over 60 U.S. cities have denounced Columbus Day, including Columbus, Ohio. But if you dig deeper into the life of Columbus, while he was not a perfect man, and while the men on his ships were definitely not perfect men, and can be accused of many of those things, Columbus himself was indeed a man of God. He told King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella that he felt that he was an agent chosen by heaven to accomplish its grand design. He wanted to find monetary gain to take Jerusalem back or establish a new home for Israel. He believed he would find lost Israel and brought a Hebrew-speaking Jew with him to communicate with them when he found them. He wanted to spread Christianity throughout all of lost Israel. He held devotionals every night at sea. He wrote in his book the Pro of the prophecies that God gave him the keys to the waters. To discover lost Israel. He wrote four different times to the king and queen asking that missionaries be sent to the new world. He mentions how the Lord guided him on all his journeys. I also find it interesting that the day he reached land was October 12th, 1492 during the Feast of the Tabernacles or Sukkot as the Hebrews celebrate. This holiday is celebrated in remembrance of lost Israel entering the promised land. How symbolic is that? That Christopher Columbus, quite possibly a member of the tribe of Joseph, enters the promised land on Sukkot, the day commemorating when Israel re-entered Jerusalem. On Columbus's second voyage, upon arriving in the islands of Cuba, Washington Irving records that an archer from the crew went searching for game and not too far from where the crew had landed, came upon three men in white tunics with white beards speaking to the natives. He was so frightened at the sight of other Europeans that he ran back to the camp. Columbus sent two different groups to find three white bearded men with no success. It is also interesting to note that Columbus's crew always thought that it was peculiar that the locals seemed to be expecting them when they arrived. Every island that Christopher Columbus found he erected a cross being at least 29 different crosses where he would meet with his men both morning and night for prayer. After his voyages, he wrote a book called Libro de las Profecias, the Book of Prophecies, that contains ideas and concepts familiar to the Restoration, including the Garden of Eden being in the Americas, and there being two capital cities, one in each hemisphere, a new and an old Jerusalem. This book was not translated and circulated in English until the late 1900s. This would be very convenient for the anti-Mormon to say that Joseph Smith read this book, but he couldn't have. Orson Hyde said, This same angel Moroni was with Columbus and gave him deep impressions by dreams and by visions respecting this new world, trammeled by poverty and by unpopular cause, yet his persevering and unyielding heart would not allow an obstacle in his way too great for him to overcome, and the angel of God helped him was with him on the stormy deep, calmed the troubled elements, and guided his frail vessel to the desired haven. He was baptized and ordained a high priest. Christopher Columbus was inspired of God to preserve as he did to discover... Oh, Christopher Columbus was inspired of God to persevere as he did to discover this continent and thus prepare a way for a class of people upon whom the Spirit of the Lord moved to follow. Wilford Woodruff. The temple work... For the 56 signers of the Declaration of Independence and other founding fathers has been done. All these appeared to Wilford Woodruff when he was president of the St. George Temple. President George Washington was ordained a high priest at the time. You will also be interested to know that according to Wilford Woodruff's journal, John Wesley, Benjamin Franklin, and Christopher Columbus were also ordained high priests at that time. When one casts a doubt about the character of those noble sons of God, I believe he or she will have to answer to God of heaven for this. Yes, with Lincoln, I say, to add brightness to the sun or glory to the name of Washington is impossible. Let none attempt it. 
In solemn awe, we pronounce the name and its naked, deathless splendor. Leave it shining on. Mm -hmm.